Hey everyone, in today's video, I am sharing five of my must haves as a substitute teacher in a K through two classroom. Now, if you've been following along with my channel, you might know that I am currently a substitute at a K through two school in my local community. It's also where my boys go, and I did this last year as well. So as a substitute, you know, popping in and out of different classrooms, I came up with five things that I pretty much always had in my substitute backpack to make sure I was ready to go. If you're subbing this year, or if you're just, you know, generally interested or nosy in what I carry in my backpack, this is the video for you. So if you're ready to see what's inside, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Must have number one was probably my smartest move all year, and that was to bring fun stickers. Now I would bring these stickers every single day that I subbed. I would have a bunch of them in my backpack. Uh, my favorite ones were these right here. They are on Amazon. They are technically water bottle stickers so they could go on students' water bottles and get washed and they wouldn't come off. Um, that seemed to hold true because some of the students would show me their stickers all year long and they lasted on there. So I think they were pretty good quality. But the way I would use them is for positive reinforcement. Now obviously I used to be a classroom teacher myself so I understood the need for intrinsic motivation, um, intrinsic, you know, positive reinforcement and talking to your classroom about, you know, why we need to follow the rules, why we're safe and respectful and all those things. But sometimes as an outsider coming in, you're kind of plopping yourself in there. You don't have as much of a relationship with the students just yet. So I like to use a little trick of external motivation just to help me as needed. I would tell my students right from the very beginning that, hi everyone, I am Mrs. Jones. We might do things a little bit differently than your teacher does and that's okay, right? We are going to be flexible together, we're going to learn together, and like I said, things might look a little different. I like to set that up right away because especially, actually no, in all the grades, I was gonna say especially in the older grades, but even in kindergarten, they loved to tell me as soon as I did something differently from their own teacher. So I make those expectations pretty clear from the beginning, things might look a little different, and when I see responsible students, good listeners, and we talk a little bit about what that is, I'm going to go over and give them a little tap. When I tap them on the shoulder, that means that they have earned a sticker of their choice. Now, as to not disrupt the class all day with students getting up and getting stickers, there's of course a certain time where they can cash in their tap that they got on their shoulder. So it's usually towards the end of the day that gives students plenty of times to, you know, get a tap. I like to do it in the hallway when I'm picking them up from specials, anything like that. And once they've earned their tap, they can come up and get their sticker during that time. So again, stickers on the whole, not the best behavior management tool for like your whole classroom all year long with you and your students because you really want to build those relationships. But as a sub or even as like, you know, or maybe around the holiday time or the end of the year where we need a little extra encouragement, not a bad tool to have. All right, must have number two as a sub are going to be read alouds. Now there are usually two different kinds I like to bring and I do switch them out throughout the year. So first and foremost, I always bring a social emotional learning read aloud. So one with an SEL focus, um, whether it's on being kind, showing compassion, over on my uh, picture book playlist here, I have a ton of different ideas for like friendship, conflict resolution, all sorts of ideas, building community, whatever you want to do with your students. So at the beginning of the year, I have I Walk with Vanessa and Be Kind. Both of these are about, you know, being kind to one another and what that might look like. So I think these are good ones for the beginning of the year. But there are tons of books online that you can pick and choose from. I always like to have at least one. Sometimes I'll fill up two um, and I switch them out every month or so. Or if I know I'm gonna be in the same class again, I'll definitely switch it out so we have it as backup. And the second type of book I always like to have in my backpack is a nonfiction seasonal read aloud. So this one I also switch out each and every month. September's coming up, so we have fall. So this is just a nonfiction read aloud that we can talk about, discuss some facts that we learned, all about, in this case, apples. I like to change it out each month, like I said, so sometimes it'll be about caribou or reindeer in December, we might read about that. Or if it is in the springtime, we might learn about butterflies or frogs. So I always like to have a nonfiction book and that brings us into must have number three, which is a directed drawing to go with a book. 
Now there are tons of directed drawings online that you can probably find paired with different books. For me personally, I like to use these right here. This is out of my monthly mini writing lessons. And in each month I have about seven different lessons with picture book suggestions that you can find either on YouTube or go grab the book at a library or something. But each month paired with one of the nonfiction books, I have a directed drawing. So together as the class, after we read about apples, students would write down a fact or two that they shared. And again, these sheets are differentiated based on your students' needs. And then they could draw a picture of the apple using the directed drawing. So each month those completely change out. Like I think in December or January, we learn about caribou and then we draw a picture of a reindeer. Um, sometime in the spring, we learn about butterflies and then draw a picture of a butterfly. But again, a little nonfiction read aloud paired with a directed drawing is a great thing to have in your sub backpack if you have a little extra time. All right, so we have positive reinforcement with the stickers. Then we have a couple different time fillers by bringing read alouds with social emotional focus, a nonfiction read aloud. So whatever read alouds you wanna have there. And then I always like to have a directed drawing because they're very engaging and fun. So two different time fillers. And now for must have number four, we need brain breaks. Now, why do I always bring these with me in my sub backpack? That's because sometimes, and again, this is zero, zero judgment, zero shame here, but sometimes when teachers are making their sub plans, they can be filled with a lot of seat work, right? Because they don't know who's coming in for them. They want to make it as easy as possible. So sometimes students are actually sitting and, you know, completing activities with paper and pencil longer than they might be used to. And again, literally zero shame there, but that might mean students might need to get up a little bit more. Maybe they're not used to sitting that long, which can then cause a couple behavior problems for you as the substitute teacher. So I had made these, I think at the beginning of last year or maybe even the year before that, I don't remember, but there's 60 different brain break cards and they're set up in five different categories. So the five different categories are listed here. There's number one is calming movement. So there's some yoga moves your students can do. This is going to be good if maybe they've been really active coming in from recess so we need to calm down a little bit we have active movement this will be good like I said if your students have been sitting for a long time doing a lot of seat work maybe they need to get up and move a little bit you can also pair an active movement and then you know before students get back to working do a calming movement or they can go into a mindfulness activity which would be the next category and with mindfulness categories, students are, you know, closing their eyes, they're taking deep breaths, they're doing frog breaths, leg hugs, blowing bubbles. They're doing something very calm and kind of, you know, bringing their attention back to their work. There's also social emotional learning questions that students can talk about. Think and say, some of them are called like, do you think you're a good friend? Why do you think that? Give some examples just to get students talking a little bit. And then there's also some partner and team breaks if you need your students to work together. Now, as a classroom teacher, I would use all of these categories. Truthfully, as a substitute, the ones I use most are the calming ones or the active ones. And again, I usually pair them. So if my students have been sitting for a while, we will get up, we'll stretch, we'll do something active, and then we'll move into a mindfulness or like a yoga pose to get them calm again before we continue whatever is next on the sub plans. Each category is color coded. So all the yoga poses, the calming movements are yellow. They each have a different category here. So I went ahead and laminated them, cut them out and put it on a binder ring that I actually keep in my uh, backpack to make it nice and easy. So I don't have to think of something off the top of my head. I can just move to a yellow one and say, okay, everybody we're doing warrior pose. Here's how it is. I'll go ahead and link these down in the description below in case you want to check them out. All right, and must have number five for your sub backpack might sound a little silly, but believe me, it's necessary. And that is a little self-care kit. Now, I don't know about you, but if you have ever subbed before, then you may notice your position isn't exactly predictable. Um, so like I said, when I go into my K through two schools, sometimes I show up and I think I'm covering a first grade classroom, but then like, actually we need you to cover meetings or you know, the, the prep period that you're supposed to have at 1.30, you're actually gonna cover music during that time. And again, totally fine, that's part of the job, but it's not necessarily predictable in terms of when you're going to eat lunch and some of the stuff you might need. So you don't know what to expect. So I always like to have a little you know, self-care kit and realistically what I mean is I just throw a couple things in my backpack, but there are some things that I always like to have. Number one, at least two different water bottles. Sometimes the school bubbler is not working. Sometimes it's going to be too far. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to go get a break and make sure that you can fill up your water bottle in enough time. So I like to bring two water bottles. That's just me personally. 
and also I always show up to school with a coffee all ready to go. I also like to have snacks on hand. I like kind bars personally. Um, I do usually pack a lunch, but again, it's not very predictable when I'll be able to eat it. So I will pack a lunch, but I'll also have some kind bars and some other snacks that you like, whatever they are, in my backpack and chapstick. When the heaters are blowing in you in the winter time, or if you have AC in your school and those are blowing and you're talking so much, my lips always get so dry, so I always bring tons of chapstick. And let's be real, sometimes I bring a little chocolate or a little candy, a little, little pick-me-up during the day too. So that can also be included in your self-care kit. Okay, so those are my five must-haves as a substitute of K through two students. Just to run down them again, we have stickers for positive reinforcement. We have two different read-alouds, usually an SEL focus and a non-fiction seasonal book. We have a directed drawing. We have brain breaks and we have a self-care kit with snacks, water, chapstick, etc. If you are also a substitute, I would love to know what types of stuff you bring to your jobs. Let me know down in the comments. Any tips that make life a little bit easier, let us know. Let's share the wealth. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.